Each and every week during the scavenger hunt series, we're posting things out that you need to do. Amen. This week was about options for women. And the reason why we picked options for women is because we stand with options for women. We help options for women. We believe that abortion needs to be uh, you know, destroyed, annihilated, gone. History. Amen. And then that means, you know what, as Christians, we need to take a stand that maybe we need to adopt some kids. It goes both ways. That wasn't a strong amen. We want to stand, but then we don't want to stand in the gap. Well, let me just tell you. You, know, I, I, I've, you probably heard it several times, but we're, we're talking about standing for God today. And it's amazing. I, I mean, just, let me just throw this out here because you, if you go through statistics, there, there's, there's a lot within this area that we rank high on. And it's not a good ranking in Polk County or the surrounding area. Poverty, poverty mindset is terrible. That's not a spiritual mindset of God. But we're living in a poverty mindset. We have, a few years ago, 1,500 kids that were still living in their cars or in the woods that didn't have a home that's in our school board system. We ranked at one time, I think, seventh, I think it was, for obesity. But this is the temple of God. I just want to make sure it says to be fat, right? P-H-A-T. Let's, can we be honest? Because if I was atheist and I print out a report, I'd be right here in the Bible belt of the country, right? We have more churches. We have 800 plus churches within, what, two or three counties? We rank high in foster care. There's more kids in foster care. More kids that's not adopted. Can I get an amen? But we're the church. Can I get an amen? Because I'm, I just want us to talk real. Because if we don't talk about it and we don't bring out the truth, then nothing can change. Amen? amen. It's about standing for God. Sex trafficking is bad. Terrible. Amen? We, we, we need to start standing for God. And that's what I want us to talk about today. And I want us to, to have an open heart. And, and we're going to pray before I even go in it because I can already tell we, we need to. Because some of you are saying, you know what? There's a cola that I drink that you're going to talk about. There's some hair shampoo that you're going to talk about. Amen. There's a place that I watch or go to that you're going to talk about. I might not get into those details, but, but I'm going to let God and Holy Spirit get to your details. It's not for me. I'm not condemning. I'm just going to preach the word of God. So let's start with a word of prayer, because there's a lot of tension today, because whenever we're called to stand, that's what separates the sheep from the goat, because it's a standing moment is when we're on the threshing floor, for the chaff to be blown away and the wheat to stay. And I'm here to tell you, God wants to use some wheat, but he cannot use chaff there. John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So who took a stand first? That's the number one question. Jesus, right? Jesus took a stand. He stood for each and every one of us, even though we were in the midst of sin, even though we're sinners, even though we owed a price, he stood in the gap. He said, you know what? I, let me just tell you something. He stood up in the courtroom and he says, yes, they are sinners. They, they, they are. They've done exactly that, even if they don't admit it or not. But let me just tell you, I'm going to wipe their slate clean. Let me just tell you, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to do the time for them. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to, it's not going to be a problem. I've got it. He took the stripes on his back. We didn't take the stripes. He took the nail holes. We didn't take the nail holes. He went to hell and conquered death and gave us the victory, right? He took the crown of thorns and gave us the victor's crown. He stood in the gap. He stood for us. And he's still standing for his word in us, his children, his creation. That's, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? Do you, do you understand what God has done for each and every one of us? That we're saved and set apart because he gave up his life. He shed his blood. He became the ultimate sacrifice for us. It says in Titus 3.5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. 
Did you get that? Not anything of our righteousness, nothing that we've done. We're all saved by grace, right? That's what it says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, right? That we're saved by grace, not of works. But according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So we're saved by his mercy, by his grace. He stood and paid a price that we owed. He stood up for us and defended us. He stands up and fights the battle for us. He gives us peace. He gives us rest. He gives us a light yoke. He gives us blessings. I I don't know about you, but if you ever watch that movie, The Passion of Christ, it's a pretty powerful movie, isn't it? And it still does not portray what Jesus did for us. That he stood in the... No, you're not going to see them. And you're not getting through to them because you got to get through me. And and you're not able to get through me because I am God. And that's my creation. Those are my children. Those who I love. And I'm standing and I'll fight the battles for them. That's that's, that's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how he stood and he stands for us? Can you see the blood coming down his back? Can you see the blood that as the cat of nine tails goes and it rips out a hunk of his side that, that you know, it, it just, you know, it, it says it's just a hunk ripped right out. Can you imagine having a hunk of your side ripped out and seeing bone and blood running out? But you're without sin. You're perfect. You're God. But you stood in the gap. You decided to take a stand So everyone that's guilty could have freedom, could be saved and set apart if they believe. Can you imagine the agony of your arms being pulled just so they can get the nail? Can you imagine the nail going through both of your ankles? Some of you cry when you get a little splinter. Do you see what God has done for us? Do you see the power within what he's done for us? It says in Philippians 4.1, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand, stand fast in the Lord, beloved. See, that word stand means to hold one's ground, maintain a position, be steadfast or upright. So my ne- second question is, why or how, why do we not stand? How do we stand? The one that stood for us, that died for us, that's given us all the victories, given us the power to overcome all things, will not allow anything to overtake us. Nothing, nothing will overtake us. Jesus has given us the comforter, Holy Spirit. Here's the one that saved us and set us apart. And we're supposed to stand because we believe because of what he's done. We're supposed to stand, to hold one's ground, maintain a position, be steadfast or upright. But let me ask you, why aren't we? Well, Pastor, I am. Well, you might be. We all do. But along with that question, how are we standing? Are we standing for what matters to us? Are we only standing for things that we care about? Are we only standing for things that only affect us? Because the last I looked, we were the whole body of Christ. If the one hand hurts, then that means the other hand should be aware of it, and we should keep coming and running as a body of Christ and standing together. Amen? You don't have kids in school, and I don't really give a rip what they do in school. That's not standing for all the word of God. Can I get an amen? We either stand for the whole word of God, or we don't stand at all. We either have to get involved as Christians on everything that comes against the word of God or we just need to go away. We're dealing with a lot of things in this world today because we're not standing for the word of God. We're only standing for what we want, what affects us, what's knocking on our our door. The churches aren't standing like they should be standing. I don't care who likes this message. Are we standing as a body of Christ? Are we actually leaving the body of Christ out? It says in Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. 
So if you're not bold as a lion, could, are you righteous? I, I'm just reading the word. I'm just thinking and studying in my head. Right? The righteous stand like a lion. If we're not standing like a lion, am I righteous? You know, I want us to be honest with ourselves. Am I really standing? Am I standing like Jesus stood for me? Am I standing like Jesus stood in the gap? He gave me victory. He gave me victory over death. He gave me my salvation. He's given me the power and authority over the wiles of the devil. Am I entertaining? Am I playing with the wiles of the devil? Or am I just, you know what, doing whatever? Am I standing or am I playing? There's a difference. See, the church has gotten standing a little bit wrong, and we have gotten standing a little bit wrong. We think standing with is actually standing against. There's a big difference. We're too busy standing with instead of standing against. We're standing with the enemy instead of standing against the enemy. We're like this instead of like this. And only you can ask that question with God. And only I can ask that question. Are you standing? Are we standing? 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. <laughs> that scripture we just don't like, do we? So are we not standing because we don't like the persecution? Are we not standing because, you know what, someone might actually come and, and hurt my family? Are we not standing? You know, I, you know we, we take that chance just being pastors. We take that chance just preaching the gospel. God forbid. But I have to trust in God. I have to do what I have to do, but I have to trust in God too. But do we not stand because of the persecution? Do we not stand because what is people going to think of me? Or do I not stand because, you know what, uh, you know what, how many times I've heard this from people? You know what, well, you know what, I, I shop there because, you know, sometimes you just got to go in the enemy's camp and get it. Right? We, we can justify all kinds. Of, don't we justify not standing? Yeah, there's some things that, you know what, there's a lot of places that are woke, that are wrong. And it's like, okay, where do I buy groceries? Well, maybe I have to pick the least of the least. Amen? But in your heart, you know what you should or shouldn't be doing. Holy Spirit's convicting, right? Holy Spirit's guiding and directing. Well, there's the only one that sells that makeup. Well, you know what? Maybe you need to switch makeup. Maybe you need to get in your prayer closet and realize that God's made you in his image and you don't need makeup. I hate makeup, personally. I tell my wife that all the time. She goes to put makeup on. And it's like, Yanni, you don't need that. You're, you're beautiful just as you are. Why are you hiding the beautiness, the beautifulness? I mean, I just don't understand it. Why are you hiding that? You are beautiful. I just don't get it. Because whenever we are called to do something for God, that's when rebellion starts within the body of Christ. That's when we start coming up with excuses. That's when we start coming up justifying. That's why we, oh, God, you know what? Those people are really big. I know the grapes are big, and I know the carrots are big over there, and I know you said that's the promised land. See, we start focusing on everything else. We have an excuse for everything else except keeping his promise in focus. So start, as soon as we start negotiating, as, start, as we start having excuses, we're standing with and not standing against. Oh, we're going somewhere. 2 Timothy 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Isn't it amazing how we have different interpretations of the word? So our stance as Christians, as the body of Christ is different. You know how divided the body of Christ is about abortion? That's why we had options for women, because we stand with options for women. I'm not afraid to say we stand with options for women. I, I love blessing options for women. We help support them. It's very little, but I, I can't wait to where I'm writing million-dollar checks and, and writing checks to build brand-new buildings all over the nation for them, because we got to come against abortion. That is absolutely death. Why do we have a law that if a pregnant lady is killed in a car accident and the baby's killed, that's double murder. That's double homicide. But then we can go right down to the, the clinic. So if she's on her way down to the abortion clinic and gets in an accident and both dies, that person gets, you know, is going to be charged with double homicide. But she's on the way to abort, but no one gets it. 
But then again, I have to ask, where are we standing? You know, are we standing saying, this isn't right, man. You need to keep your baby. And if you need help, I'm going to help you. If you need milk and diapers, I'm right there with you. We can do this together. How are we standing? How are we standing? God stood for us, and we can't stand for him when it gets a little bit hot in the furnace. But he gave us salvation. He gave us his word. He gave us power. He gave us peace, that we can have peace in the midst of war. That when hell's breaking loose, you can still have peace because to be absent from the body is to be present with him. And if you're not going to be absent from the body, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. I'll be right there with you. But can you stand? See, some of us don't see the power of God because we can't stand for God. Because the only way you can see the power of God is when you're standing there witnessing for God and standing for his word and standing and not budging. That's when you're going to see God. There was three that went in the furnace that had a relationship, that had an encounter with God. How many were standing outside and never had the encounter? You can't have an encounter unless you're willing to stand. See, we want an encounter, but we don't want to stand. We want to compromise things. We want to negotiate things. We want to do things. It's all, it's all incorrect. It's all wrong. 1 Peter 4, 16 says, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. It says in Philippians 1, 21, For to me to live is Christ, to, and to die is gain. Doesn't it say we're supposed to give up our life, to have life? 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You might be the only one standing, but don't, don't, don't think that's in vain. Don't think that's not making a difference. Sometimes you, you have to stand so others can see you. And when the victory starts coming, it's amazing how they want to come along with you. This place would be jam-packed people down the road when the first wheelchair person goes out and they're walking and the wheelchair is going to the dumpster. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. But, you know, the church is on the threshing floor because the ones that's going to experience the power and the glory of God are the ones that's going to stand for the power and the glory of God. If you're going to entertain, you're going to entertain. If you're not going to, and I'm talking to the body of Christ, I'm talking to Christians. You want the power in your house? You want, you want to be like Obadiah? That, you know what, man, bring in the ark and there's an anointing, there's a favor, there's a blessing. Then you're going to have to stand for God. Because he'll bless those who stand for him. He'll be there to fight the battle. You don't have to fight the battle. He just needs you to stand. He needs you to show up to the battle. You might be mocked. You might be spit on. You might be crucified. You might lose some friends. Oh, the world might not like you, but God Almighty loves you, and he made a way for you. And there's rewards in heaven, and he's going to fight the battle. Vengeance is the Lord. Right? It's the Lord's. It's not ours. We have Daniel. <laughs> How'd you like to be thrown in a lion's den and have the best night's sleep? Don't tell me that's not a testimony. Don't tell me there's not power in that. Well, what happened? Well, you know what? They, they just wanted to do this, but I decided to stand. I decided to stand. I'm standing against this. And you know, he was able to stand because he had a prayer life. Because in a prayer life should be establishing a relationship with God. But see, just as we talked in Bible basics today about prayer, is too many of us, we don't really have a prayer life. Because a prayer life is something that, that I enter in my closet, and it, it grows me to know my Father in heaven. That I know his will, and I know his ways. But too many times we've made our, our prayer closet a request closet, a demand closet, about us closet. Well, I need this, 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 to the point where our prayers is nothing but repetitious, where our prayers are, are all memorized and, and there's no heart or feeling within our prayers. And Lord, I need this, 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 you need this bill, I got this bill, and, and thank you, amen, hallelujah, and we turn around and walk off. When the prayer closet should be the time that, you know what, I'm coming to him. To know his will. So when I pray in his will, I ask in his will, huh, my prayer is going to be answered. Because I already know his will. You think Jesus really needed to get away and know the Father? The human side. But wasn't that for us to realize that, you know what? We, we need to come and spend time with the Father so we know the Father's ways. That we know his will. We know whether we need to turn right or left. We'll know that, you know what, because we have a relationship with him, that I'm not going to be begging or lacking. 
I know what he promised me. And if he promised me it, then it's going to be okay. And he's promised us all stuff. It's kind of like what we talked about last week. We talked about obedience, right? It's preached from the pulpit. And it was in my heart to let you know that, you know what? Too many of us, we take obedience completely out of context. Obedience does not determine God's timing. But as soon as we're obedient, we expect God's timing. Well, where's my blessings? Where's this? I've been praying. Obedience does not determine God's timing. Do you get that? But if I have a relationship with God and I know it's his will and I know it's his timing, it's going to be okay. Because as long as I wait for him, it's going to be the best thing ever. Joshua, right? He had a relationship, right, with God. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You, you see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They didn't really stand, did they? What did they stand for? Look at the corruption. Look what happens in our lives. Look what happens with the enemy whenever we allow the enemy, when we stand with the enemy. What happens? They were just standing with the enemy, right? If you're not standing against, then you're standing with. And if you're standing with, then you're standing against God. It says in Psalms, and I love this, and you hear me say this all the time, Psalms 1. It's one of the most beautiful passages, scriptures, Psalms, in, in, to me, out of the whole Bible. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So pretty well, this man's going to stand, right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, right? Whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. See, I have it memorized in the King James Version. But I'll, I'll try to read it to the new King James. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand. Did you see that? If you don't stand for him now, you won't be standing in the judgment, right? The ungodly are not so, verse 4, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Galatians 5.1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. It's not going to be a long day. We're about to close. Because I knew this is going to be a tough message. It's going to be a challenging one. But it's one that we have to talk about, right? It's one that we need, we need to stand, right? Are we standing for the one, the king of kings, that gave us salvation? Are we standing for him? Are we giving him glory in our lifestyle of standing? Are we accepting a job that we shouldn't accept? Are we negotiating with the devil in the midst of our job to get the promotion because we don't think the promotion goes for him? Are we shopping at places that we shouldn't be shopping at? Are we tainted? I hear it all the time, but everything's corrupted and everything. But when are you going to start standing? When are you going to start standing? Whenever you're standing in the presence of Jesus, well, God, can you give me just a few more and I'll stand the next time? When are we going to start standing as a body of Christ? When are we going to start standing as a body of Christ? When is your home going to start standing? When are you going to start standing? When are we going to say no to this stuff? When are we going to say no, no, no? When it affects our home or when it affects the body of Christ? We have to start standing for God because he stood for us. Amen. Businesses would be shut down that doesn't love the Lord if we would do our part. Schools would have prayer if we would do our part. You know, I, I just saw a survey that, that, that says majority of Americans, young adults, millennials, you know what? They think that it should be against the law if we don't use the proper pronouns, that we should be in jail. How? Why, where are we standing? I mean, do you guys want to be 80 or 90 years old being pushed around the nursing home? Mr. Miss Chihi, just make sure you, don't, you cover everything? I don't think so. Let me tell you, you're either a mister or you're a miss. You're not an it, they, them, whatever it is. Let me just tell you, you're a God's children. 
And let's get to the root of the problem. Let's stand against violence. Let's stand against, you know what, you know what the things that they've encountered in their lives. Let's stand against abuse in home. Let's stand. The Jewish culture, they used to go around. Oh, you know what? Get out of here, buddy. There's sin in the camp. And you, I know you've been beating your wife. And I'm here to tell you with the group of guys, that's not going to happen no more. You're not going to be fighting and molesting your children. You understand me? When are we going to start standing? It's not just standing there. It's standing with families and saying, this isn't going to happen no more. Because most of the people, 90% of them, it's because they've been hurt, sexually abused, raped. But we're not, where, where, where are we standing against that? Where, where are we standing to get them help? Where are we standing in the gap? That's why I love about options for women is because they're building a brand new building right beside the abortion clinic. And they're giving life. They're giving free, you know, sonograms. Let me just, if I can get them to hear the heartbeat, and if I can get the man in there to hear the heartbeat and see the image, oh, there's a huge 90-some percent that they're going to keep the baby. And we're offering help. We're offering bottles. You know, we've made baskets from our church to individuals that decided to keep their kids. We put a basket together, all kinds of diapers and bottles and everything. You didn't know that because I don't want to advertise everything that we do. Because it's not the glow. It's for, it's for God to get the glory. But we give away baskets. Make sure that family, here, here's a basket and here's a church home. And here we're praying for you. And if you need anything else, you let us know because we want to make sure you're successful. We want to make sure that child's successful. Where are we standing to keep fathers in homes? Where are we standing that we are going to be accountable for our decisions? You did it. You got to, you know what? It's not saying you got to live with it because I'm going to be there with you, but we got to get it cleaned up. The government loves for families to be divided. They started that a long time ago. Let's get the father out of the home and then we can make sure that we teach everyone to have a hand that reaches out that's empty instead of full. But see, in God's kingdom, you're supposed to reach your hand out full. Because you have a father that has abundance. You have a father that has everything, that owns everything. And you should be a giver and you should love to give. You know, let, me just, let me bring this load of diapers because I know you're going to need it. I, let me bring this because you're going to need it. When are we going to stand as a body of Christ with each other? Just, as I said, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. Joshua 1, 9, and 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You understand that? He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, but we still can't stand. Well, I don't know about this, Pastor. Well, I'll just tell you what. Take one item. Take one thing and start standing. Start standing. It's time that we start standing. Are you willing to stand? It says Revelation 3.16, So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I wonder how many lukewarm Christians we have. I wonder. I wonder. James 4, 17 says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Right? Which brings me to my third point. Who are you serving? What master are you serving? Because you can't serve two masters. So if we're not standing for God's word, we're not standing against the enemy, what master are we serving? It says, no one can serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two. Amen? You cannot have another idol. God has to be first. But he can see that on how we stand or what we're standing with. So let me ask you, we're closing. Who do you serve? You serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords that, that stood for you and paid the price for you? Or are you standing in the enemy's camp? You're negotiating. Well, I got to go there and get that. Well, you know, I got to eat at this place. Well, I like this. I, you know what? Doesn't it say, you know what, always going to be pers- there's going to be persecution? I'd much rather be persecuted here than in eternity. I'd much rather go through hell here than, than, than eternity. 
I much rather realize that I'm just a vapor. I'm just here for a little bit. But you know what? Eternity's big, and I want to make sure that, you know what? My name is written in that book. Now, it might be real small, and it might be on the naughty list, but it's written in the book. Right? But it's written in the book, so I, I'm getting in. But I want others to get in. And because I want others to get in, I want others to be blessed, means I got to stand. And when I proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that means I'm proclaiming his word. That means I'm proclaiming that this is the word of God. This is the absolute truth. This is what I live by. And this is what we all should live by. That doesn't say that I'm perfect. But what it's saying is that we can all live by this and stand for this because this is perfect. And because of what he did makes me perfect because his blood is applied upon me. Matthew 10, 32 through 39. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. See, whoever stands and whoever don't stand is still a confession, isn't it? Let me read that again. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is Jesus. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it and he who loses his life for my sake will find it what's he saying is if there's anything above him i'm sorry it can't be he has to be first and if he's really first that means your lifestyle should be able to say no i'm coming against that that's not right in our schools that's not right in my home i'm not shopping there i'm not going to that place I'm not going to some place that's woke. I'm not going to some place that's compromising the word of God. That's why I stopped going to Starbucks a long time ago. I'm just saying, when are you going to, when are, are we supporting the enemy or are we going to support the body of Christ? When they fire a Christian because they refuse to wear the pride shirt, <laughs> you know what, that, that's the end, man. I was done way before that. But we need to start looking and investigating. And this is why I love the new technology, because we're going to start sending things out within the new technology of corporations and businesses that aren't woke, who we need to support. And it's up to you. There's businesses right here that's Christian. Four Rivers Barbecue just opened. The man started out of his mission of feeding what, a young cancer, a girl for cancer, and, and, and here, here's his ministry. I mean, there's, there's people out there that has a testimony, that wants to stand and share the gospel. We need to start standing for the word of God. We need to start standing against the enemy. Because if I'm not standing against the enemy, then I'm standing with the enemy. Because I can't serve both. I can only serve one. And we know, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father. I don't know about you, but I want Jesus up there. Hey, look there, man. They're standing. We have individuals in other countries that are being killed because they're staying for Jesus. But when it comes to I got Oreos or not, we can't even stand. I like the ice cream, so I, I you know, God will forget. We're standing and we're not even experiencing what they're doing. It's time that we start standing. It's either time that we start getting a reverence and a hunger for God to stand, or let's just get out of the Christian lifestyle. Let's stop being lukewarm. And let's just go ahead and say, deny him. Right? That's what he's saying. I don't need, I don't need the lukewarm. Because all you're doing is tainting me. Because who wants to come to the body of Christ when you look like the world? There's no hope. There's no power. There's nothing. I want someone that's willing to say, I love Jesus. And I'm willing to die for Jesus. And you can see it in my lifestyle. You can see it. Let them go ahead and hang me. Let them go ahead and shoot me. Let them go ahead. Whatever they need to do. Let the enemy come. But I'm here to tell you I'm standing for Jesus no matter what I have to lose. No matter what. But you might not just lose anything. You might have a furnace experience where you have an encounter with God. Where it gives you the hope and the desire and grace your faith to stand even greater when are we going to start standing for god god's waiting because he can't wait to say look at them look at them because he's not going back 
to those who's not standing and saying, look where the Father is. There's something else chasing you. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's time that we repent. It's time that we ask God to forgive us. And that's the last thing. I hope that you enjoyed the message today and I hope that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you have not and you would like to right now, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness of your sins and receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior and you are saved and set apart. That's all it is. And I want you to email me. I want you to email me so I can be praying with you, that I can be believing with you, that we can equip you, that we can stay in contact with you because I want to welcome you to the family. And while you're here watching right now, make sure you check us out at Peak Worship and make sure you get involved with all of our social medias. That means you like us, you follow us, check everything out about us so you can get plugged in. Amen. And we will see you next time.